And so I might introduce what I'm going to say by saying it from different points of view. What is going on out there, folks? Welcome back to The Grounded Gamer. I, of course, am Jay Fonzarelli, and uh, it has been a while, but I'm back. I'm back to give you that healthy portion of factual information with just enough of my own opinions to spice things up a bit. So sit back, relax, and let's get right into it. Lots of CD Projekt Red in the news, folks. Now, they've just recently ended their feud with the author of the Witcher book series, which their video games, of course, were based on, and whose name I won't even attempt to butcher here. But you can find all of the details, his name, and the full story about this linked below in the description. But yes, the feud has ended, and their license to use the Witcher series has been renewed, which is great news for not only CD Projekt Red, but for us gamers as well. Well, with the massive critical acclaim that they received over The Witcher 3 and now the acclaim that the Netflix TV series is getting, this is all sure to bring even more demand for future Witcher projects. So again, great for CDPR and great for us gamers. Now, this wasn't the only news surrounding CDPR, as they've been talking a lot about new updates that have come to their Red Engine, which was used to make The Witcher 3. The now, Red Engine 4 is being used to take full advantage of this very ambitious and very hotly anticipated Cyberpunk 2077, which is, by the way, due out this April, which I cannot wait for. This game is my most anticipated game of 2020. I know I've said this a lot, but it just is is. That aside though, in an interview with WCCF Tech, one of the game's producers, again, whose name I will not butcher here, talked about just how necessary it was to build upon the Red Engine for Cyberpunk 2077, stating, and I quote, First and foremost, we wouldn't be able to develop Cyberpunk on the same exact engine as The Witcher. The benefits of the new engine are that we were able to develop Cyberpunk 2077 in the first person perspective with all the verticality of the various buildings and skyscrapers around the place. Another thing is, when it comes to doing global illumination, when we are creating anything, in this example, the city, you have to have two versions of it. You have to have the daytime and the nighttime city. And at night, you have to have all the of those neon lights in the city, especially after you know rainfall or something like that. You could just develop the geometry for the buildings and add the neon lights on top of that. You have the shader of the water dripping off, but this wouldn't give you as big an impression as having global illumination as well. So while developing, we always wanted to ensure we have this wow factor, end quote. Now to me, it really sounds like they're really pushing the detail aspect of Night City, the world of Cyberpunk 2077. I mean, come on, they're creating two versions of Night City, one daytime Night City and one in the nighttime. So all those neon lights and everything that you see, that global illumination they're talking about, the details should be incredible. And I know you guys cannot wait to see this game just as much as me, but if you want to read more about this particular story, it's going to be linked in the description below. Now, what you're looking at here is Johnny Silverhand himself in doll form or figurine form, whatever you want to call it. This 12-inch scale figure here happens to feature the band Samurai's frontman played by Keanu Reeves himself. And of course, this figure comes with a guitar and rock and roll pose. Now, there is a 7-inch version of this figure as well. And, you know, with price tags of around $25 and $40 respectively, I just find the quality of both could have looked a bit better. Now, these are made by McFarlane toys and I've seen better looking McFarlane dolls, figures, toys, whatever you want to call them. I am not personally a collector of this sort of stuff, but I have seen better looking McFarlane toys in the past. I know to each their own and I'm sure given the excitement of Cyberpunk 2077 that these are sure to sell just fine. Now folks, a word from today's video sponsor. Brought to you in part by Saltiest Tears. When you're on the losing end of a my plastic is better than your plastic argument, let a warm hot cup of saltiest tears take you away from it all. 
Now in four terrific flavors, Horizon Zero Yawn, Same Old Gears, Breath of the Gamer, and Cherry. Buy it now at Publix and all Ace Hardware stores. So at the 2019 Video Game Awards, Microsoft shocked gamers around the world when they showed off their new console. Simply called the Xbox, with the model being the Series X, and I'm assuming this is the premium model alongside of maybe a cheaper model coming out later. Hello Lockhart, we're looking at you. Yes, I think that they will have another model out and possibly it'll be called the Series S and that'll be their budget model, so to speak. And I know you've probably heard enough about the Series X from many other channels out there, but I'm gonna give my two cents on at least the way it looks. I like it, folks. I like it in that it looks aggressive, like that of a tower of power, maybe? No, no, not you guys. But it does. It looks like a tower of power. It looks like a mini PC. And in that regard, I can tell that they're going for power here. Speaking of which, a new rumor has dropped that the Sony PlayStation 5 will be dropping with 9.2 teraflops of power, giving developers much more creative room that is sure to... You know what? I don't even care at this point. Look, it's all speculation, all rumors. You know, we can talk about 12 teraflops opposed to 9.2 teraflops. At the end of the day, it's all rumors and speculation at this point until Microsoft and Sony give official word. We don't know exactly how much power these things have, but what I do know is that both Microsoft and Sony have been pushing better load times and better performance when it comes to frame rates, and that is what truly matters at the end of the day. Look what Sony has been able to do with their one point, who knows what teraflop it is. I don't personally know. I know some geeks out there yelling at me, it's 1.4.3. No, look, I don't care care what it is, but look what they're doing with the base model PS4. Look at games like God of War, Spider-Man on that thing. Looks incredible. Hell, look at the Xbox One X and what they did with Red Dead Redemption 2 incredible. So I don't care about hearing about the T-flops or the cores or the RAM and everything like that. Yes, it matters. But for the average gamer like myself, we just want to hear about real world performance. And that's what it sounds like Microsoft and Sony are both pushing going into next generation. And I couldn't be happier. In other news, Stadia has acquired Typhoon Studios. Who gives a well, I guess this video's done. I'd like to thank first and foremost, each and every one of you viewers out there who took the time to listen or watch this video. I also have to thank today's video sponsor, Saltiest Tears. And with that, I'd like to ask that if you like what you see in here on this channel, show some of that support, please hit that like button. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. It's absolutely free. Until next time, folks, try to be the best possible you, be kind to one another, and of course, as always, Game on.